My name's Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection in Hazelmere and today I'm here with Tiger. So today I've got for you the third part of The Little Lighthouse Keeper. If you haven't listened to part one or two yet, I recommend uh, watching those videos first. But today's uh, story is the third story in here and it's called Message in a Bottle. I hope you'll enjoy it. Ray was having a busy day. First, he polished the windows of the light room. Then he did his washing and hung it out to dry. There's always a sea breeze round a lighthouse. Then he took a dustpan and brush and brushed the dust off the spiral stairs. Croop, croop, choked Croop as the dust got in his nose and mouth. Well, go outside then, silly, said Ray. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm coming out to do some painting. He tipped the stair dust into the dustbin and went outside with two pots of paint, one red and one white, and two brushes. He started work at the foot of the lighthouse and began to paint it white. Swish swash went the brush, swish swash. The wet paint shone in the sunshine. Croup followed after him, wiping splashes off the ground with a rag under his paw. The little tern flew to and fro in the shining paint. If she saw a patch that Ray had forgotten to paint, she flapped her wings near it, calling, Zit, zit, missed it! Zit, zit, missed it! Ray finished painting all round the foot of the lighthouse with white paint. Then he started painting further up with red paint. But the sun had gone in. Grey clouds were blowing across the sea. Spots of rain were beginning to fall. The waves were getting higher. There's going to be a storm, shouted Ray. He quickly took the painting things inside and ran out again to fetch his washing. Come on, little turn, come in. Croak indoors, quick. They all went in out of the strong wind. Ray shut the doors and windows tight. Now the wind was howling round the lighthouse. Waves were smacking into the black rock and sending spray shooting up into the air. But inside it was quiet. The fire was warm. Croup lay down in front of it on his red rug with his nose on his paws. The little turn went to sleep on the back of an armchair. Ray sat at the table. In front of him were bits of wood he had found washed up on the rock. He took out a sharp little knife and began to carve one of the bits of wood into a ship. He carved the sides and the deck and the masts. Then he made little paper sails and stuck them onto the masts. Usually, when the little sailing ships were finished, Ray painted them bright colours. He made the masts lie flat and pushed each little ship inside a bottle. Then he poked a long stick inside the bottle and made the masts stand up in the air again so that the sails were spread out. It looked as though the ship was sailing along inside the bottle. Then Ray pushed the cork back in the neck of the bottle. He loved to make the little sailing ships for his family and friends. I've made one for Cousin Tim, one for Tom, and one for Tubby, he thought. And now I'm going to paint this little ship blue and silver for Auntie Millie. But I haven't got an empty bottle to put it in. He went to look in his cupboard, but the only bottle in there was full of rum, so that was no good. But he had a little swig while he was there. And then he went back to the table singing. This is what he sang. A little drop of rum warms your tum, warms your tum. Then he climbed all the 96 spiral stairs to make sure the light was shining brightly through the storm. The bad weather lashed the lighthouse for two whole days. On the third morning, everything was still. The sun was warm again. The sea was as smooth as glass. Ray and Croup went for a walk round the rock. Croup, Croup, said the furry fat dog barking at something floating nearby. It was a large bottle. Ahoy there, said Ray, just what I'm after. Croup lolloped down to the water's edge and pulled the bottle ashore with his paw. Ray picked it up. There's a piece of paper inside, he said. He pulled out the cork and then carefully eased out the piece of paper. Croup stood looking at Ray and the little turn came to perch on his shoulder. They both wanted to know what it was all about. 
Why, it's floated across from the Coast Guard station, said Ray. It's from Luke. This is what he says. Dear everybody, wasn't that a dreadful storm? Hope you're all right. Here's a riddle to cheer you up. What lies on the seabed and shivers? A nervous wreck. Hee hee hee, chuckled Ray. Chuckled Ray. Zit zitty zit zit, twittered the little turn. I nearly fell off Ray's shoulder. Creep, creepy, creep, creep, guffawed creep, and rolled over and over laughing until he fell into a rock pool. Good old Luke, said Ray. He certainly cheered us up. Well, and as well as that, he sent me just what I needed to finish off Auntie Millie's ship in a bottle. Hey, thank you for listening today to today's story. Um, I've got the next part of this story coming for you soon. I look forward to bringing that to you soon. Okay, bye for now.